Assalamu alaikum everyone. Today we'll be going through 9706 accounting syllabus and today we'll be covering 1.5.3 partnership. So if you're watching this video, I'm expecting you have already learned how to prepare a profit and loss account and also a statement for financial position. So if you haven't, please watch my other videos on the statement of profit and loss and financial statement because in this video I'll be talking specifically about operation accounts I'll be talking about how to prepare capital and current accounts and the contents of a partnership agreement and this is very important and also the last three points for our syllabus so if you haven't um, learned how uh, how to prepare a statement of profit as profit or loss account please kind of check it out now moving on well to give a basic summary uh, appropriation accounts are made after we find our profit for the year for the business right so you can see Oh, wait, chat, go away. You can see it's already made. It's already given here from the format you can see. So, we prepared the appropriation account to find a residual profit. And what is a residual profit is, it's basically It's basically the profit left after deducting the partnership salaries or any interest or any drawings and making some adjustments to it. So that is a residual profit. Now I'll just put move this to the side and discuss what should be included in an appropriation account and what should not be included in an appropriation account. So so firstly uh Profit for the year is included, definitely, and that is something we don't have to worry about for most of the case. And there might be some cases where you have to find the profit for the year and then um, create an appropriation account. Now, next up, what we have is our interest on drawings, right? Then here's the highlighter. We have your interest on drawings, right? So interest in drawings is being added here and when a business let me just write this up when uh, when a partner makes a drawing makes a drawing um, the business charges the partner with some interest to business just parking with the list now keep in mind if there is no if there is no um, partnership agreement this is not applicable so I'm just gonna write this here It's no person, and we're gonna learn this in our. Uh, we're gonna learn this in our provision of partnership act, and also our contents of a partnership agreement. So I'm still gonna just mention it here. If no partnership agreement, I just searched. So, why do the business, why does the business charge partners with interests? This is because, let me use a different color here. Um, wash. Well, this is, uh, the interest is charged to discourage, to discourage. 
partners from making excessive withdrawals. Oops, sorry. Draws. Discourage partners from making excessive withdrawals. Since making excessive withdrawals is going to uh, cause constraints in the cash flow and cause liquidity issues with the business, so it is done to discourage partners from making excessive withdrawals and also to be fair to the partners uh, in in the business. So let's say if one so let's say if one partner uh, makes so much withdrawals and there is no um, charge against it, then it is kind of unfair to the other partners. So that is uh, another reason. Now you might have seen that we have added this value. Well, it's a very simple concept. We're basically going to add anything that is going to increase our um that is gonna that is gonna increase the business's profit like let's say uh that is that is being charged by the business from the partners right so i'm just gonna make a small note here at anything that increases our profit And by this simple note, you can basically understand by watching this format. Well, now we're making our interest in capital. So basically, when 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 so basically when um when a partner introduces capital to a business. And if there is a partnership agreement similar to the drawings one, the partner is entitled to get a, a certain amount of interest on the capital they have uh, introduced to the business. And that is going to be paid by the business and that's why we're deducting it from the profit. Now, similarly, for the salaries, it's, it's the same case. Uh, the those are included in the partnership agreement, and if they are not, they are not entitled to um, paying salary to the partners, right? So after after this, this is not written here. After we have found our, after we've deducted and added values, this is our residual value. And from this, we basically uh, find our profit share, and that will be included in your question. Like, if if the partnership is on a two is to three ratio, then the profit is going to be shared between the residual profit is going to be shared between the partners with so two is to three ratio. Now, I think you might have noticed that there is no drawings in our. Um, there is no drawings in this appropriation account, so you're so you're right. The, uh, we do not include drawings in our. Oh wait, let me use a different color for this. Drawings in appropriation account. So why do we not include drawings in the appropriation account is because it's neither a profit nor a gain or an expense basically. So that is why we do not include this in our appropriation account. However, drawings are included in the financial statements, uh, in the balance sheet, 
we deduct this from our equity right okay now i have a question if you have understood this i think that's basically what our as partnership contents include and I, I i have prepared a question for you here uh kindly pause the video and solve this question uh, if you need help you can check out the draft here and make some adjustments and find the profit share so to find the profit share for both partners and i'm gonna solve it as well so Let me first guys please pause the video and solve this and then come to the solution okay okay so lee and john are in partnership and shares profit two is to three their partnership agreement included the following drawings made by lee was 1200 for the year and the 31st december um interest in drawings and capital are both five percent john is entitled to a salary of 15,000 Lee has a capital of 50,000 and John has a capital of 48,000 and the profit for the year is 29,000 you have to find the profit share so let's just make our for initial adjustments here we know that we have to deduct our salary so I'm just gonna put a negative sign here uh, okay okay let's just uh, move on to the question so Profit for the year. Which is 29,000. There was interest on drawings and capital at 5%. So let's add our interest on drawings first. So it's going to be Lee and John. So, okay. So there, so there is no drawings made by John, right? So I'm just going to erase John's one. So it's going to be only 5% into 12 point. Now, if I've Put this in my calculator. It's a drawing of six hundred. Since there's this is only a single value, I'm just gonna put this on this side. Yeah. So I'm gonna put twenty nine thousand. This twenty nine thousand six hundred. All right. Now next up, we're gonna deduct the interest on capital why are we doing the interest on capital is because it's um the business is paying this to the partners lee and john so lee has a capital of fifty thousand and John has capital of 48,000. 50,000 and the percentage is 5%. 48,000. And if I again put this on my calculator, this is um, 35,000. Sorry, 2,500. And this is 2,400. This will be a total of 4,900. I'm putting this in bracket to indicate uh, the negative value or the deduction of this amount. 29600. So this will be 24700. This is not our residual profit yet because we have also salaries to object to deduct. So we're going to deduct salary now.
and I think salary is being paid to John Orley. Okay. So we're going to pay salary to John Orley. 15,000. Two four seven zero zero minus one five zero zero nine seven zero zero. Now this is our residual profit. Right, this is our residual profit. After we found our residual profit. We can find the profit share from this ratio. It's two is to three, right? So Lee gets um, a percentage of two by five, and John gets a ratio of three by five. I'm just gonna extend this line. So profit share. First, let's just go with Lee. It's two by five into nine seven zero zero. Which ends up being three eight eight zero and for John it's three by five. And this will end up being 5 by 2 zero. So if you add this to this basically becomes 9700 zero again. So this and this values are the same. So that is how you prepare a appropriation account and there might be f and there might be a few more adjustments uh, which that depends on how the question is being prepared, right? Now, we're going to move on to our second part of our content is how to prepare a capital and current accounts. All right, so when is a capital and a current account formed? So, if a business decides to um, keep its capital fixed, so when it keeps its capital fixed, We form current account. And when a business decides capital fluctuating we form capital account I mean the naming says it speaks for itself right so when the capital is fluctuating we're gonna be a capital account and when it's not it's gonna be a current account well however there are few little tweaks between these two but it's all the same uh, let me just prepare the format for each of this first then I'm going to explain that to you so anything that decreases capital is debit and anything that increases capital is credit why? 
because capital is a liability. And we have learned if liabilities increase, it's credit, and if they decrease, it's debit. Right, now. So first, the dollar signs and the opening capital value, which is our balance CD. So why, sorry, so it's the balance VD. So why does capital account have a balance VD? Because this is because capital, when you're preparing capital account, the business decided that their, the capital is not going to be fixed. It's going to be fluctuating throughout uh, the business year. And since it will be fluctuating, the capital amount will be differ. The capital amount will differ, right? So that's why we have an opening balance here. This is your balance B. Now, if the partner, if the partner, this is for uh, capital account for certain partners, by the way. Let's say for partner A. So if the if partner A decides to introduce more capital, this can be in any form. It could be cash, it could be assets, anything. That is going to be increasing their capital. And we saw from the appropriation account is that they get a interest on their capital and that depends if there was it was included in the partnership agreement or not. So you have to really understand this because this will be on your MCQs a lot. And similarly if they get a salary that will also increase your capital account. And lastly, it's the profit share they get. So it's a pro if so, profit shares will be on this side and loss share will be on this side. So if the residual value is a loss, it's going to be on the debit side because the because partner have not have to now pay the business the loss amount. So. I'll close this. Now on the credit side, so sorry, now on the debit side. If partner A withdraws any capital. So if partner A withdraws any capital, it's going to decrease their capital amount. So it's going to be the debit side. And drawings is going to be here. Drawings is going to be on the capital account and not on the appropriation account. Similarly, interest on drawings. But if there is going to be any loss share, that is going to be here. And I'm going to put uh, a star sign here because if there is no loss, there is no, um, what you call it, it's not going to be on the debit side. It's going to be on the credit side because it's a puncture. And we'll finish this off with our closing balance. And then the opening bells for the next year, definitely. So that will be our capital account. Now for the current account, it's pretty similar. Burger A. It's pretty similar because 
ju there's just going to be one alteration is that there is no there isn't going to be any capital introduced or any capital withdrawn because the capital here is fixed right so we're going to put the same um uh, we're going to put the same values here Balance BD. So you've noticed that there is no, um, capital interviews or any capital withdraw. So that is basically our capital and current account. Um, please, guys, please read these pointers because they're going to help you in, uh, understand the format better. And here is our reasoning why um, the values that increase the capital is on the credit side and why the values that decrease the capital is on the credit debit side. And that will be our end. So the advantages of being a partnership is the capital you get and the capital invested by the partners is often more raised by a sole trader themselves. So the first one is written here. It's basically a comparison between a sole trader and partnership. Similarly, there is going to be a greater fund of knowledge and experience. So basically, when there is um, more than one people in a business, they have different experiences, they have different knowledge, they have different um, expertise in running the business, and that can be used to uh, an advantage to the business. Right? Now, for the third one, you can see a partnership may be able to offer a greater range of service to its customers or its clients. Well, this is true sometimes because uh, a sole trader cannot um, provide uh, various products to their customers, right? Because it's difficult and often there is a, often there is an issue of, of, of financing such projects so green partnership will uh, make it flexible for the business to offer a greater range of services and products and the business does not have to close down or be run by any experienced staff in essence in, abs in the absence of one of the partners basically this point says that if a partner is absent another person can look after it right there's basic definition of this and also the losses are all shared by the partners the common one now coming to the disadvantages a partner does not have the same freedom to act independently as a sole trader has so definitely when you are in a partnership you have to consult with other partners before taking any decisions regarding the business activities and you cannot um, imply your choices and your opinions uh, in the business as you could if you were a sole trader uh, as if you were running the business as a sole trader so there's this is a limitation uh, for a partnership business a partner may first stated or a partner may be first stated by the other partners in their plans for the direction and development of the business. This is basically a uh, conflicts might offer. Conflicts might offer. Um, so yeah, profits have to be shared by all the partners. A common disadvantage. A partner may be legally liable for acts of the other partner. So, so this is basically if a partner does anything, um, let's say they, uh, if a partner gets arrested for 
any criminal activities that's going to impact the whole business and all the partners of the business as well and it is going to create a poor brand image for the business so uh, one partner's activities is going to affect the overall business right One more disadvantage that you can mention is it is it has unlimited liability. What does unlimited liability mean? By the way, a sole trader also have unlimited liability. So when you're comparing this point, please make sure to write this for uh, limited companies does not have. So what is unlimited liability? It's basically if a business goes bankrupt and have dues that needs to be paid, the partners have to pay from their own wealth and not from the business. So if a business fails and ha and owes money to other people or other business, the partners have to pay from their own pocket to cover the dues of the business. So that is. Definitely a very major disadvantage for partnerships. Now, next up is our partnership agreement. Uh, an agreement is usually a writing of setting out the terms of the partnership. And we have a partnership act, which was formed on 1890. So, all partners are entitled to contribute equally to the ca capital. Okay. So these are the rules which govern a partnership in absence of formal partnership agreement. So when well, there is no self, there is no partnership. So all partners are entitled to contribute equally to the capital. So all partners need to contribute equally. Like they need to have equal um, capital amounts or equal shares. Partners are not entitled to interest on capital. Partners are not entitled to salaries. No interest charged in their drawings. No interest charged in their drawings and the partners will share profits, profit and losses equally. So the share and loss would basically be 50%. And no interest charge on the drawings. No interest is charged on capital. However, partners are entitled to our interest of 5% per annum on loans that are made to the partnership. So, if there is any loan, a par if a partner has provided a loan to the business, so they will be entitled to a 5% interest from the business. And this is when there is no formal agreement between the partner and the business. Right? So, that's all. That's mostly what you need to know for this chapter it's a it's a basic chapter uh, 